what's here? Bloop! Rastafari, let's get it. What is here is life. What is here is love. Yes, in Indeed, it is. It's so good too, right? But the ego mind will have you worrying and thinking and stressing and have all this anxiety enter your body based on some fictional story that is not true. Singing don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. Sing it with me. What's up, y'all? Preston Smiles here. Blessings and blessings from the beautiful, sunny Venice Beach, California. And today's transmission is the five steps, the five tools, the five instantaneous game changers for how to let go of worry and anxiety. So, step number one is the breath, right? Air circulation is life. And a lot of times what people find and what I have found is that whenever I am very anxious, whenever I am in that space where it's, I'm damn near at a panic attack, whenever I am deeply worrying about some part of the future that I can't even control, I'm usually also not breathing. How many of you guys have noticed that? Put something in the comments right now if you know that you find yourself not breathing at times or when you think about some of the worst times in your life that you can probably come back to an understanding that there wasn't as much oxygen in the brain. And so step number one is stop for a moment, put your hand on your belly, breathe into the bottom of your belly and just come back. <sighs> breathe in some of that beautiful prana as my man Infinite Waters would say and, and come back to life. Come back to what matters the most, your breath, circulation, bringing air to the, and oxygen to the brain, right? This is a game changer. Just this one alone will immediately take you out of some of the heaviness of anxiety and worry. Now, way slash step number two to really unearthing and stepping further into the truth of who you be is fact or fiction. You see, so many of us are taking fiction, these fictional stories, right? We are story beings. We do everything with language. And a lot of us unconsciously create stories about the future that are not steeped in facts. Most of the stuff that we believe is gonna happen, and I, I'm telling you this from pure experience, that most of the stuff that we imagine up, right? This is, yeah, I'm gonna do this thing, and then the worst case scenario, right? This is what we're doing. We're, we're rehearsing worst case scenarios over and over and over again. And how many times, and I want you to leave in the comments, how many times have that exact scenario happened to you? Because I, I'm pretty sure that, let's say you, rehearsed a hundred worst case scenarios, maybe two of them have actually happened to the T. You see, there is a huge difference between facts and fiction. And what I want you to do the next time you're experiencing anything that you're worrying about, something in the future, am I gonna be able to pay my bills? Am I gonna be able to put a roof over my head? Am I gonna be able to get into college? Like all of these thought processes, right? Am I gonna be able to, you know, make this relationship better again? Most of the worry and anxiety is coming from the story, not facts, the story that your ego mind, the separate self, has made up. It's trying to get you to play small. And so what you wanna do when you notice the difference between, is this steeped in facts, right? So let's take an example of uh, being able to pay your rent, right? Some, a lot of people stress about money. They worry about money as if the month before that, and the month before that, and the month before that, and the year before that, it wasn't all taken care of. Now, this stress does something, it breaks the body down, and that's something we all have to really understand, is that worry and that anxiety and that stress that we're, it, it actually is killing us. It's like a slow suicide. And um, as you guys understand with the law of magnetism or the law of attraction, that uh, we only attract that which we are. Right? So if you're stressed and worried and anxious about money, 
then you're saying to money, to the universe, it, it doesn't live here. I am not abundant. I am not sufficient. I need, 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 need. And I understand if maybe you're in some part of the world where there literally is no food, water, or shelter. But most of the people watching this video are in Western cultures where it's actually bullshit. Your ego is lying to you. You're not gonna freaking die. You're fine. You are gonna die. We're all gonna die, but not like for real, for real, right? But that's a whole nother video. But, oh, oh, you're not going to die. So laugh at the ego. This is the, the part B to that. You laugh at the story. You disassociate from the story. You see, when my ego tries to tell me stuff and have me worry about stuff that I cannot control, and this is the biggest piece of it, guys, we have become a society of, of control freaks. We wanna know and we wanna control the whole thing. We don't control shit. We don't control anything. So you can let go of that and trust in that everything that can be controlled in your life is under control. It's in control. It's all good. It always has been and it always will be. Hear me. Let this land in your heart. It always has been and it always will be. It is your duty to move into the flow, the flow, the surrender of this beautiful now moment. Collapse into the now. <sighs> What's here? Blow! Rastafari, let's get it. What is here is life. What is here is love. Yes, indeed it is. It's so good too, right? But the ego mind will have you worrying and thinking and stressing and have all this anxiety enter your body based on some fictional story that is not true. It's not true with a capital T. It's true with a lowercase t and your body is experiencing that. So way number two is to let go disassociate from the story, laugh at it, and then step back in and, and get present to what is. Ooh, I like the way I said is, right? And that brings me to way number three, step number three to releasing anxiety. And it is a game I used to play when I was a kid. I'm sure some of you guys used to play this. Tell me, tell me a memory you have of this in the comments. Uh, I used to play this game called Hot Potato where they would give you a potato and we would all pretend that the potato was flaming hot like lava, right? And we grab the potato and then we throw it to someone else and then every time you got the potato you had to get rid of it as fast as possible. And our worry thoughts, our stress thoughts, our anxiety is very much like that. The moment you catch it, you don't have to hold it for long, right? You can notice it and think of it like that hot potato and let it go. You see, a lot of times we think that the thoughts have us, but in reality, we have the thoughts. We're holding on for so long. And remember, that potato is like lava, so you gotta get rid of it. You gotta let it go, and you can. Hear me, you have that power. You actually do. We've become habitually addicted to our worry and stress thoughts. My grandmother is a prime example of this. Every time I go surfing, she's, you know, that boy, don't be going surfing. They got sharks in that water, right? But she doesn't understand the statistics of me being bit by a shark versus me being in a car accident or something of that nature. And so these worry thoughts have produced a brain tumor and many other things that she has experienced in this lifetime. And for me, she is a great, beautiful teacher, which brings me to step number four, which is ask a powerful question. And that one of the most powerful questions you can ask of those worry thoughts and those stress thoughts and those stress thoughts is what are you here to teach me? What are you trying to show me about me? What part of my genius is trying to be uh, expressed and released and dispensed, right? Because usually, right at the edge of a big breakthrough, you experience a breakdown. And so the breakdown is a mental breakdown. It's not true with a capital T, it's a lowercase t. It is the type of breakdown that has you worrying about things. How many of you guys have had that experience where something beautiful comes into your life and the moment it comes in, like falling in love, you, you then, start worrying about whether how long you can keep it. This is this is the breakdown and the other side of that is the beautiful breakthrough. So you can just ask it. What are you here to teach me? What are you trying to show me? And then listen. The part B to that is just listen. Wait. It'll always speak. The universe, whatever you'd like to call it, source energy is always speaking. Sometimes it speaks through nature. Sometimes it speaks through that person who cuts you off in traffic and brings up all that stuff for you to process and be with. So just listen. And Step number five, last but not least, is have fun. Do you know how difficult it is to worry and stress when you're actually enjoying life? We have become a society that is so freaking stressed out 
that we forget to play. We forget to have fun. Bloop, 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 Rastafari! Bob Marley, don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. Yeah! Blessings and blessings. If this video inspired you in any way, I ask that you click like, leave a comment, and please share or tag somebody in this video. If this resonated, if you think this is something that, that other people need to see or, or uh, experience, please share it. And if you're new to the tribe and you're on YouTube, please click that red subscribe button. I put out videos every week. Uh, if you're on Facebook, same thing. I love you. Blessings and blessings. I am. We are. Hashtag Love's Voice. We are the Love's Voice tribe. Ah.